Winter is coming. Which means that a lot of people are starting to think about how to heat their campers. So in this video, we are going to talk about some safety considerations on heating a camper with an electric space heater or fuel burning space heaters like the Mr. Buddy heater or an e-spar heater. Welcome to Explorers.life. My name is Nate. I teach people how to build DIY campers. Let's get started. Let's get started with electric space heaters. There's really only two considerations for safety with electric space heaters. And the first one is don't plug the electric space heater into a power strip or an extension cord. The second one is don't put like dirty clothes or something like that on top of the space heater. Aside from that, there's really no other safety considerations when it comes to electric space heaters. So before we start talking about the actual heaters, let's talk about fire. Now I have a really expensive piece of paper and a really cool hat that makes it so that I'm actually pretty qualified to talk about fire. So when we have a fire that is burning something, whatever, we have a few chemicals that are going into and coming out of the fire to support the combustion process. So we're always gonna have oxygen going into the fire. Fire has to have oxygen to burn. Whenever the fire burns, if it was complete combustion, which means that there's plenty of oxygen, there's plenty of heat, and there's plenty of fuel, we're gonna have H2O, which is water, and CO2, which is carbon dioxide. So there's always going to be water coming out of combustion. Now CO2 over here, that can actually turn into CO, which is carbon monoxide, which is the poisonous one, if we don't have enough oxygen going into our fire, creating less than perfect combustion. In the case of a Mr. Buddy heater here, the Mr. Buddy heater works by propane is going into this little mesh area right in here, and then it is burning, and then that heat is going off into the living space of the van. So we've got the living space of the van here. So everything is working properly and it's absolutely going to heat your space because you do have effectively a fire going on inside of the Mr. Buddy heater right here that's putting off heat. Uh, but the thing is, it's also putting off H2O, which is water vapor. And so that's going into the actual living space of the van, which is going to make um, like the inside of the walls kind of damp, uh, clothing a little bit damp, all that kind of stuff. It also has CO2 going into the actual atmosphere of the van. Now, what the issue is here is whenever you're using oxygen to burn to create all of this stuff plus heat, you're going to be using some of this oxygen. Now, when you're using this oxygen, there's gonna be less oxygen inside the van. And when there's less oxygen in the van, like we said just a second ago, this is going to start to not be able to, to go through combustion properly that's going to turn into carbon monoxide. Now, the Mr. Buddy heater, it does have a low oxygen sensor inside of it. So if we have low oxygen going on here, this should shut down given that that sensor is working properly. And if we have low oxygen and this shuts down, then obviously this stuff is going to go away up here. And then so it's effectively going to be pretty safe. Now I think this is a great option for like smaller, like truck topper campers and tents even and stuff like that. Um, because you, it's a small space that you can kind of air out every day uh, so that you can get rid of all of this water vapor that has built up inside of the space. It's got the low O2 sensor on it so that uh, this should shut off before it starts producing carbon monoxide but it's also a really, really good idea to have a carbon monoxide detector in your space in addition to the low O2 sensor that's built into the unit. And lastly, anytime that you're using the Mr. Buddy heater, I would also recommend just like cracking a window or opening a tent flap or something like that so that oxygen can be flowing in and that humid air can be coming out of the space so that everything stays nice and neat. Now let's move on to the other type of fuel burning heater, which is gonna be a heater like the e-spar heater or a Wabasto unit. For a fuel burning unit like the Wabasto or an e-spar heater, uh, here's how it works. For units like these, we have four pipes. One, two, three, and four. 
These upper two are inside of the van and these lower two are underneath the van. Now the two that are underneath the van are the actual combustion chamber uh, intake and exhaust. Now what the intake and exhaust is for is for the actual combustion chamber inside of this unit. Fuel is being pumped into the combustion chamber here and then fire is happening inside of that combustion chamber. So oxygen is going in the intake to the combustion chamber, it's burning up, and then it is coming out of the exhaust in the form of H2O, water vapor, CO2, carbon dioxide, and CO, carbon monoxide. So all of this stuff down here never actually goes into the van. All of this stuff over here is not being pulled from the actual living quarters of the van. This pipe and this pipe here is the intake and the exhaust from the heater. This heater is taking air from the intake, sending it across a blower that is blowing across the combustion chamber, and then the hot air is coming out of the exhaust side. So the only thing that's going on the that's coming into the intake is the living air, and the only thing that's going out is the hot living air, if you will. All of the actual combustion is happening inside of here, and there's really no way for any of this stuff to be getting into the van unless there was some kind of like, I mean, something going wrong with the heater, you know, a hole in the combustion chamber or something like that. So a unit like this is definitely gonna be safer than a Mr. Buddy heater in terms of there's really no chance for any of this stuff to go into the living space. There's really no way for the oxygen level to be depleted from the combustion process here. Now a heater like this, for all the reasons we've talked about, is going to be my recommendation for like a camper van or an RV. Uh, if you have a smaller, uh, like a tent camper or something like that for the back of your truck bed, uh, one of these is also going to be great. Just, you know, keep a carbon monoxide detector and crack a window. Keep a carbon monoxide detector on one of these as well. Probably not a chance you're going to need it, but better safe than sorry. Smoke detector too. And that pretty much wraps up this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I've got a full video playlist of this Ford Transit build series that is currently going on that you can check out. We'll see you next time.